no architecture is good enough when you have not included or thought about logging and monitoring. Hello everyone, welcome to the Design for Monitoring series. And today we are going to talk about Design for Azure Monitor Data Sources. Well, before we start, we just need to understand the importance of monitoring. It, has, it is something which is not relevant to the cloud infrastructure. We need monitoring everywhere. You have electricity, there is a monitoring. You have pipeline, gas pipeline, there is a monitoring. You have vehicle, there is a monitoring. So monitoring is everywhere. This will, uh, this will give you information that you need, this will give you the data that you can act upon. So if we talk about the Azure architecture, if we talk about the Azure infrastructure, we need to understand what is that service which will give you that insight. So if we talk about Azure, this is Azure Monitor. We all know this is Azure Monitor which is a centralized service or unified uh, service that gives you all the data or enables you to get all the data, all the information that you're looking for. So if you need to, if you need to define as your monitor, we can define with uh, this as the service, the unified service or centralized service, which helps, which helps you maximize the availability and performance of your application and services. Now, if you think how it will, how it will uh, maximize or uh, maximize the availability of performance by giving you the information which is needed, right? So that you can act upon it. If you're not getting the actual performance that your application should be performed with, you would have the data information by which you can change the size of the virtual machine. For example, this is not always the virtual machine. So with this data, you can figure it out where exactly is the glitch and you can fix it. You can make the performance better, enhance the availability. So Azure Monitor delivers a comprehensive solution for collecting, analyzing, and acting on telemetry from your cloud and on-premises environment. Yes, this is, uh, Azure Monitor, but it also supports other clouds and Azure or and, and on-premises as well. It is not only related to Azure, right? So we can we can write here just to help us uh, cement the knowledge of it. It will help us to maximize the availability and performance. and performance, right? And we'll see <clears throat> what all data it collects. Whenever we enable, because Azure Monitor by default collect a lots of data related to the platform and helps you with the metrics by default. If you click on Azure VM, go to the overview page, you would have lots of metrics available for 90 days free of cost. So yes, let's see what all data Azure Monitor covers. So we have already mentioned here metrics and logs just to save time in advance. So data collected by Azure Monitor fits into one of these two fundamental types of data for monitoring, metrics and logs. So if we try to understand what is metrics first, so metrics is a point in time data. It is a numerical value that describes some aspect of system at a particular point in time, okay? 
and they are lightweight and capable of supporting uh, real-time scenarios, as I said. And telemetry such as events and traces are stored in logs. You might have seen uh, while doing the troubleshooting related to any, any technical source, maybe server, maybe, maybe uh, system center or anything, you have seen yourself or your team reading out the logs. So that's the telemetry which can help you understand what happened and how could you make it better. So that's the log. So basically these two types of, uh, these two types of uh, data uh, that Azure Monitor collects. But what it does by collecting the data? Well, we can store that data and create queries to analyze it. So where we gonna put the data? In the log analytics. You can move it to storage account or event hub. That's, the, that's a different part. Uh, so, Let's follow this diagram here because, and come to the actual topic of today's, which is designing for Azure Monitor for data sources. We have to focus upon the data sources. So we talked about a little bit, what is Azure Monitor, what data it collects, and this is the time to understand the sources. Why sources? Because sources are, the data source for the Azure monitor, that's why. Means whatever infrastructure we have, we have to monitor. And how are we gonna monitor? By injecting or by collecting data from the different services. So what are those different services? The very first is data that relates to your custom application code, right? So your app. Data from the Windows or Linux VMs that host your application, virtual machines, that is operating system. You may have, or you will get the host by default, but if you want the guest, you need to install the agent uh, and you would have the uh, OS data as well. Now, these are the resources. Uh, application is the application running on the operating system, but these things are running on the uh, 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 these things are the Azure resources. Like VM is the Azure resource. Inside the VM, there is an operating system. To get that uh, data, we have to install the agent. Uh, that agent is dependency agent. You can have dependency agent or monitoring agent. Uh, and inside that OS application is running. So this VM is Azure resource. There are thousands of other resources which is required for the infrastructure, including virtual network, NSG, storage account, anything in Azure that you create is a resource. So we need to get the data from all the resources which are part of our infrastructure. Now, where are we creating these resources? We are creating these resources inside the subscription. So data that relates to your subscription uh, it includes like uh, Azure Health or availability or who is accessing those kind of thing. Now these subscription are also a part of any tenant, right? Azure AD tenant. So data about your Azure organization level services, which is tenant, also be uh, suggested that you should have the data so that you can analyze who has the access, who is working on it, how it is worked, who is changing, what it is changing, right? So yeah, let me move these things, uh, right? So these are few thing, uh, data sources for Azure Monitor. So what we can do with these metrics and logs collected from these different data sources. We, I, I should add one more here as custom. We can have custom as well. As I said at the beginning, you could have data source from different cloud or uh, uh, on-premises and <clears throat> That's why I'm mentioning custom here as well. So what are you gonna do with these metrics and logs? Well, we can have 
so many things. We can have so many things that could help us. For example, we can get insights. We can get insights out of this, which could be customized as well. If you have heard, I'm pretty sure you have, if you're following my videos, we have already covered a lot of insights like application insight. You can have application insights uh, with the help of the data. Container insights, VM insights. These are different kinds of insights that you could, you could fetch out of this data. You might need to spin up something else. For example, if you're talking about application, you might need to have application insight or the SDK of application insight or to enable the monitoring for the containers or for the VMs. But yes, of course, you can get the insights, uh, which is pretty detailed and deep uh, information. Uh, then you can have the data stored somewhere like a uh, workspace like log analytics from where you can run the coastal queries and analyze various aspects of the data. You could, you could keep those queries and enable the alerts so you can respond to the different situations with the help of uh, queries that, with the help of queries that you have uh, enabled for the alerting purpose. So analyze, respond and you, you can also respond in an other way not only with the alerting for example auto scaling you could respond to scale up or scale down or rather scale out or scale in like horizontal scaling if you're talking about let's see if it's vmss you are you need some kind of metrics which will trigger the auto scaling so you can respond that way as well you can also visualize, I know the spelling is wrong, but you know what I mean, it's visualize. You can visualize what is happening inside your resource through dashboards, Power BI, workbooks, and different views. Even as I was saying, if you go to the overview of the Azure Virtual Machine, you would have those visualize uh, graphs and you can select your metrics that you wanna see. You can, you can also select multiple matrices that you want to see and put it as a dashboard. That's not enough. You can also integrate it with different services like uh, Logic Apps or uh, there is one more uh, service, um, just forgetting its name, it's Logic App and Event Hub. You can move that uh, to the Event Hub. You can integrate the Event Hub, uh, which is a streaming platform and uh, even ingestion service. It can transform and store data using any real-time analytics provider or batch uh, adapters. So these things you can do with the help of this, uh, this information that you have through these different sources. So it is very important from where you are getting the data. You have to get or fetch data which is needed are absolutely required to create a best monitoring uh, infrastructure or plan. Now, you need to take care of the pricing, which is very important because it could be, it will get very expensive if you will not keep a tab of how much data you are moving to the log analytics. So you need to be very sure what all logs, what all, what all metrics are absolutely required and how big is your infrastructure. Uh, all right, well, with this, let me close this video and we'll try to check some design consideration for log analytics in the next video. So till then, take care and goodbye.